Hi, this is Dr. Claire, and today we're going to be talking about alternation of generations in plants, uh, which is the reproductive cycle of a plant, okay? So um, in animals, uh, when you go through reproduction, um, animals are diploid, and they go through a haploid phase that's very short, that just as the sperm and the egg, and the sperm and the egg come together as haploid structures to form a new diploid individual. Um, but the sperm and the egg are only consist of a single cell, and it's a very, very brief phase in the reproduction of, of an animal. It's a little bit different in plants. In plants there are two distinct phases, one which is haploid, which means you have, to have only one copy of the chromosome, and one which is diploid, which means that you have two, and both of those phases are relatively prolonged and contain multiple cells, so they're multicellular phases, okay? So the diploid phase of a plant's life cycle is called the sporophyte. Um, the sporophytes make spores, um, spores are haploid, so the, the, in order to go from a diploid sporophyte to a haploid spore, the um, sporophyte has to go through meiosis. Meiosis is the type of cell division that um, re reduces the number of chromosomes in the cell. Okay, So you go from a diploid sporophyte to the haploid spore. That haploid spore then will germinate into the gametophyte. It'll go through cell division through mitosis. Mitosis doesn't change the chromosome number, so you'll have a structure that is uh, multicellular, but all, all the cells in that structure are haploid. Um, it'll grow for a while, and then that haploid structure, the gametophyte, will produce gametes. Gametes are sperm and eggs. Those will come together to fuse to form a new diploid um, individual that will then germinate into the sporophyte. So it goes back and forth and back and forth between haploid and diploid, between sporophyte and gametophyte, and that's the alternation of generations, okay? So that's the general cycle. Um, now what I want to go over in this lecture a little bit is how this cycle differs in different groups of plants. So um, I, we've looked at this phylogeny for land plants before. Um, <clears throat> uh, the sister group to land plants is a type of grain algae. Um, and so the ancestor of all the land plants was probably an aquatic organism. So if you look at uh, plants that are closer to the base of the tree, they tend to have more features that are similar to aquatic organisms. So they actually require water in certain parts of their reproductive cycle. Um, so in yellow on here, those are the bryophytes. Bryophytes uh, require water for their reproductive cycle and also the seedless vascular plants, which are the lycophytes and the ferns and horsetails. Um, and then as you get towards the other end of the tree where you have more derived traits, you have some plants that are more well adapted to living in a dry environment on land, and so they don't actually require water for reproduction. So we're going to look at the alternation of generations in bryophytes, in seedless vascular plants, in gymnosperms, and in angiosperms. So that's what we're going to be going through today, okay? So let's start with the bryophytes. Um, so bryophyte might be a term you're not super familiar with. The most common bryophyte is mosses, or the most well-known bryophyte is mosses. So, you know, mosses are those wee little plants that you see growing along stream beds. Um, they're pretty common, even in a dry environment like Colorado. Um, other types of bryophytes include liverworts, which are these kind of leafy-looking, scaly things, um, and also the hornworts, which are a very weird plant um, that's kind of spiky-looking. All right, um, so the bryophytes, um, they do have some adaptations to living on land. They do have a waxy cuticle that prevents um, evaporation from their tissues, but they don't have a well-developed vascular system. So remember we were talking about water transport in plants and you had the xylem that was moving water around the whole body of the plant, that bulk flow that allows things to get really big. Mosses don't have that. And so they are limited in the size that they can grow to. So they tend to be very small plants. Um, they also require water for reproduction, so they tend to live in very moist environments. So let's take a look at the um, reproductive cycle of a bryophyte. Now the one thing that's kind of surprising about bryophytes is that the thing that you see when you go out and you see a moss, you are looking at the gametophyte. So you are looking at a haploid structure. That green thing that you're looking at, that's haploid. There aren't a whole lot of uh, organisms that you are big enough for you to see that are haploid on a regular basis. So that, that's kind of a, a unique thing about mosses. Um, so the, the, the gametophyte is relatively large, about maybe yay big. Uh, it's photosynthetic and it's um, uh, independent. So it can kind of grow and be happy. And you'll have male gametophytes and you'll have female gametophytes. The male gametophytes will produce sperm from the antheridia. Those are the structures that produce sperm on the male gametophyte. And then the females produce eggs in the archegonia. The sperm will leave the antheridia 
and um, this is where the water is required. They actually have to swim from the Antheridia to another moss plant to get into the Archegonia. So if there's no water for them to swim through, the plant can't reproduce. So you got that water for the sperm to swim through, the egg remains in the Archegonia, the sperm swims in there, fertilizes the egg, and then the sporophyte grows from there. So that sporophyte is gonna grow out the top of the gametophyte. It looks like a little, it almost looks like a flower. It's not a flower. It's a little brown structure that kind of grows up out of the top of that. Um, that is the diploid structure, so the, the sporophyte is always diploid. Um, it is completely dependent upon the gametophyte. It can't survive on its own. It's not photosynthetic. So it has to get energy from the gametophyte. And then that sporophyte will grow up. It'll produce spores in its sporangia. Um, those spores are haploid. It'll release those spores, and those will settle on the ground and uh, germinate into new gametophytes, so new male and female gametophytes. So that's the alternation of generation in mosses. Okay? <clears throat> the uh, seedless va vascular plants, or the tracheophytes, um, are a, a group of... Um, of plants that have vascular tissues, they have the ability to move water around their bodies pretty efficiently, but they don't have seeds. They produce spores and they produce um, gametes, the same as the mosses do. And so the, the tracheophytes include things like ferns. Um, you're probably familiar with what a fern looks like. Also horsetails. Uh, horsetails are this kind of, they look like a bottle brush almost, or this big kind of fluffy thing. Um, sometimes you see them along streams in Colorado. And then finally the club mosses, which are called mosses, but they're not actually mosses. Club mosses are kind of cool. They have um, explosive spores. So if you find a club moss that's producing spores and you shake it near like a lighter, it'll like make a big fireball. It's kind of fun. Um, try it some, well, maybe don't try it sometime, but be careful. All right, anyway. Um, so in, in the case of the, unlike the, the, the bryophytes, the tracheophytes, um, the large green plant that you're looking at is not the gametophyte, it's actually the sporophyte, and the gametophyte is much smaller. So let's take a look at the alternation of generations in the, in the tracheophytes. So um, in the tracheophytes, let's start with the adult fern. So you've got this fern, and you may have noticed on the undersides of the leaves of fern, there are these little dots. Those are the sporangia within the, well, on the fern. Um, and those sporangia are going to produce your haploid spores. So meiosis is going to be happening in those sporangia. You're going to have the haploid spores produced there. Those spores will then germinate into a very small structure that is the gametophyte. Um, it is photosynthetic. It can live independently, but it is a, um, it's, it's like, they're about this big. We're going to be growing ferns in lab, and you'll see that the sporophytes are not a very large structure. So, I'm sorry, the gametophytes are not a very large structure. So the, you'll have these, these tiny little gametophytes that'll, that'll um, uh, germinate from the spores. Um, those will then have the archegonia and the, and the antheridia. The antheridia are going to produce sperm, the archegonia are going to produce eggs. Again, the sperm needs water to swim to the egg. So again, it, with, the, with the tracheophytes, with the ferns, uh, water is required for reproduction because it needs to have water for the sperm to swim from the, uh, the antheridia to the archegonia. So sperm swims along, it fertilizes that egg. Um, then you have the zygote that's going to grow up into a new sporophyte. So the sporophyte, again, diploid, that's the big fern that you see, produces the spores, which are haploid, which germinate into the gametophyte, which is haploid, which makes gametes, which fuse together to form a diploid structure, which grows into the sporophyte again, okay? Same pattern, but instead of the, like in the mosses where the gametophyte was very large, in the ferns, it's the sporophyte that's large, okay? All right. So then we have the seed plants. Now seeds are a very important adaptation to land because um, a seed is a structure that will allow a plant to survive through harsh environmental conditions, dry or cold environmental conditions. Um, also the other thing that seed plants have evolved that the ferns and the mosses have not is a way to get the male gamete to the female gamete without water. And uh, the way plants do that is through pollen. So pollen, uh, which many of us are allergic to, including me, if you have an allergy to pollen, you're basically allergic to plant sperm, more or less. Um, so they no longer need water for, for reproduction. 
They tend to be larger, more complex organisms. They have better water transport systems, and that allows them to colonize a lot of habitats that um, can't be colonized by something like a fern or a moss. So you might notice that ferns and mosses really only occur in very moist uh, habitats, whereas other types of plants can grow, grow in places that are very dry, okay? Um, so let's take a look at um, reproduction in these seed plants. So, so far we've looked at the mosses, we've looked at the ferns. In the mosses, the gametophyte was the big green thing. In the ferns, it was much smaller but independent. In the seed plants, the gametophyte is even smaller and it's dependent upon, or at least the female gametophyte, is dependent upon the female, or, or dependent upon the sporophyte for survival. So the, the, the female gametophyte is what's called the megaspore. It forms within the ovary of the flower, well, if we're talking about a flowering plant, it forms within the, the an ovule inside a female reproductive structure. And that, that um, megaspore is completely dependent upon the, the, the sporophyte for survival. The male gametophyte is the pollen grain. And it's actually more than one cell, because remember we said that um, the, the both stages were multicellular, but it's very tiny um, and it doesn't get very large and it is dispersed to wherever the, the, the megaspore is located um, in the sporophyte. And then it can grow to connect with that, um, that megaspore. All right, so let's take a look at, um, at this. Uh, so we are going to look at two different types of seed plants. We're going to look at the gymnosperms. The gymnosperms, gymnosperm means naked seed basically, um, and the gymnosperms are the conifers, so your pine trees, your fir trees, your spruces, things like that. Ginkgos, uh, which you may have seen, they're um, a common street tree. Their leaves turn a very beautiful yellow in the fall. And then the cycads, which kind of look like a palm tree, but they're not a palm tree. Okay, um, so these none of those plants have flowers and um, their seeds are not encased within tissue after they're produced. So they have naked seeds. Okay, um, the other group that we're going to talk about is the angiosperms. The angiosperms are the flowering plants. Um, so that includes basically all crop plants. So um, all of your grains, your fruits, your vegetables, those are all angiosperms. Um, <clears throat> a lot of trees, so any tree with a broad leaf is an angiosperm, anything that has a distinct flower, and things like grasses that you might not think have a flower, the thing that's producing a bunch of pollen, it is a flower. Um, so those all count as flowering plants, okay? Um, and the flowering plants, their seeds have fruits. So their seeds are surrounded by tissue that's derived from the sporophyte. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. All right, <clears throat> all right so let's look at the reproductive cycle in these guys. So in gymnosperm reproduction, um, your sporophyte is the tree. So if you're looking at a pine tree, that tree is your sporophyte, okay? That sporophyte is then going to produce the spores. In this case, those spores are the megaspore that's contained within a female cone and the uh, pollen, which is contained within a male cone. So if you've ever noticed on a pine tree in the spring, there's these little soft crumbly cones. Those are the male cones. And then there's the big woody cones. Those are female cones. And so the, the male cones produce pollen. That pollen goes through, is transported by wind to the female cone, all right? Then um, in the, within the female cone are these megaspores. Um, the pollen lands on the cone and it, um, it can grow what's called a pollen tube that goes between the scales of the cone and allows um, the sperm cells to travel down the tube and get to the egg cells that are contained within the megaspore, okay? So that's where fertilization occurs. That, that fertilization then forms a zygote, which then grows into a seed, which is contained within that cone. But the cone has these um, scales and the seed is just lying on the surface of that scale. So it's not surrounded with tissue. And then when the scale, when the cone dries out, those scales open and the seed just falls out. Okay? Um, so that's, that's gymnosperm reproduction. And that seed, of course, germinates into a new sporophyte. So our gametophyte generation is the pollen granules and the megaspore within the cone. The cone is actually not part of the, of the gametophyte genera uh, generation. The cone is produced and part of the sporophyte generation. So the cone itself is diploid, and within that, it has the haploid gametophyte. Okay? Okay. So let's take a look at flowering plants. In flowering plants, it's very similar. Um, you have the plant, which is your sporophyte. That plant produces a flower. So if you think of your typical flower, um, the flower has male reproductive parts. 
those are called um, anthers. Um, sorry, they're stamens. They're capped with an anther, and that anther is going to produce the pollen. Again, the male gametophyte is that pollen grain. Um, and then the female gametophyte, the megaspore, is going to um, form within the ovary of the flower. And um, there's, it's a little bit different in the flowering plant because the, um, the female gametophyte divides and it has an egg cell and then it has a larger cell that actually contains two nuclei. So it has twice as much um, DNA as is normal. So then the pollen grain lands on the flower. It grows a pollen tube down to the ovule and it delivers two sperm. This is called double fertilization. One of the sperm goes to the egg and forms the embryo. The other sperm goes to that cell with the two nuclei in it. Those are called polar nuclei. And the two nuclei from the, from the, um, the megaspore and the one nucleus from the sperm for, fuse together to form a triploid cell. So three copies of each chromosome. That triploid cell forms the endosperm. And the endosperm is, um, forms a structure within the seed that will feed the embryo when it starts to grow. So it's going to be a food bearing structure for the embryo when it starts to grow. Okay, so then your seed uh, goes into a dormancy phase, eventually it germinates, and a new sporophyte grows out of that seed. Okay, <clears throat> so the take home here is that we always have two generations, we always have a gametophyte, we always have a sporophyte. The sporophyte is always diploid, the gametophyte is always haploid, sporophyte makes spores, gametophyte makes gametes, and then just the different types of plants, um, those, the sporophyte and the gametophyte are different sizes, but this, the pattern is always the same, okay? All right, so that's it for alternation of generations, and I'll catch you guys next time.